Video 2, What is an IEP? Hi, my name is Marin and I'm mom to an amazing autistic kiddo. I'm here to talk to you about some terminology you may have heard in meetings with your child's school. Your child may have been offered an Individualized Education Program, or IEP. The rules that govern an IEP are part of a federal law known as IDEA, or the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. A well-written IEP should provide a map for your child's education. In order to qualify for an IEP, a child has to undergo an evaluation that is usually done at the school. It's important to note that a school evaluation and a medical diagnosis are not the same thing. You can see one of our other videos to learn more about this difference. An IEP has several key components that are required under that law. They may look a little different from state to state and school district to school district, but at a minimum, an IEP will include PLAFP or PLOP. PLAFP stands for Present Levels of Academic Achievement and Functional Performance, and PLOP stands for Present Levels of Performance. This is what describes your child's present levels or where their knowledge and skill level is right now. You can think of this as the foundation of the house that we're about to build. It may include test information, teacher observations, parent input, and other forms of information. It basically describes where your child is today, what their needs are, and any concerns that need to be addressed. This area should also include a statement of your child's strengths. What are they good at? What are they interested in? What are they excited about at school? Goals. The IEP will also include a set of goals based on the present levels, and this should be created with input from you, and ideally your child. What do they need to work on? What do they hope to accomplish? What are their top priorities? The goals will also include objectives that help the school and the team measure the progress towards those goals. It is important to note that each step is based on the others, so it's important not to skip over any of the components. You can't establish goals without knowing where the student is and it wouldn't make sense to describe what services and support they need if we haven't described their needs accurately, right? Services. The IEP will also include a list of services and individualized instruction that your child will receive. This might be something like 15 minutes of direct speech therapy per week or an adapted physical education class. Modifications and accommodations. The IEP will also include a section on modifications or changes and accommodations or special supports that your child might need. A modification might be something like allowing extra time for a test. An accommodation might be something like access to headphones during lunch hour. It will also include information about whether your child has access to any assistive technology, such as an augmentative and assistive communication device, or AAC. It is important to note that, like a house, each part of the IEP is built on what has come before. So it's important to pay attention to each section and take your time to make sure you understand it. You can request copies of written documents prior to the meeting, and you are not required to sign anything during the meeting. If you need more time to review the documents or you have questions about them, please just ask. It is, however, important to note that if this is not your child's first IEP, the IEP will automatically go into effect unless you decline it within 14 days of receiving it. Parents need to proactively decline or reject changes to an IEP by checking the box marked decline or object on the prior written notice form, which we'll describe in more detail in a later video. This must be done in writing, otherwise, the IEP will go into effect. The IEP is a contract, not a suggestion. So if what has been outlined in your child's IEP is not what's actually happening, you need to meet with your child's team. Remember, the parent is an integral part of the IEP team and a parent can ask for an IEP meeting at any time. 
You do not need to wait for a scheduled meeting to bring up a concern or ask a question. Thanks for listening. 